All right, so fish nutrition. I want to know if it's a herbivore, a carnivore, or an omnivore. Once you've identified the type of fish that you have, you want to make sure that you're then feeding them the proper diet. Pretty simple, right? You just want to make sure, I like to use the most expensive foods because you know what, it's a little fish, how much does it eat? I don't have a massive tank, and if you do have a massive tank, then you would have the budget to allow for that anyways. And I think that you should pull all the stops when it comes to the nutrition of your fish. I'm using mice as shrimp. I like the Hikari food. They just have these little frozen individual cubes that you have. And so you just feed them a little bit of a cube. I'll show you how to prepare that part. I have a tropical vegetable one that I feed them, again in these cubes here. So all you do is you look to the ingredient list and you try to make sure that it only has things that are based on, on um, in the uh, salt water uh, type of environment. So anyways, I have the prepackaged frozen foods here. I also have brine. Brine are considered the candy of the sea. All the fish go crazy for the brine, but there's not much nutritional value in the brine. So what you want to make sure that you're buying is gut-loaded brine shrimp. And so the gut-loaded is where they feed the brine shrimp nutrients that are good for the fish. And as the little brine shrimp eat up these nutrients, once those nutrients make it into the stomach of the brine shrimp itself, then they freeze it and package it. And now whenever the shrimp go crazy for the brine, they're also getting the nutrients that the brine have been gut-loaded with. Very cool. And uh, this is another brand that I had of a frozen mice shrimp. Um, turns out to be more of a cheap brand. So I have all my prepackaged ones here. What I'm gonna do now, before I continue on, is put them straight back in the freezer. You do not want to allow these to thaw and then refreeze them. So um, what I'm using here is by Reef Nutrition. And uh, this particular one's called Fido Feast. Reef Nutrition seems to be amazing with the different things that they offer. It's all live food. You have to keep the stuff refrigerated. But at any rate, you just read the directions and you then make sure that you're buying the right type of live food for the specific corals that you have. I also have by them Roddy Feast. The difference is this one's for stony corals because the type of phytoplankton that it has inside of it its, its diameter is 40 to 275 microns. And so a micron is about the diameter of a human hair. That gives you some kind of a reference there. The phyto here is only 1 to 15 microns. So this goes to show this is going to be better for filter feeders and soft corals. This one here is going to be better for the stony corals, um, your LPS, large polyp stony. And so I use it for that. So I'll show you how I actually feed them those. And then what I also do is I soak my food in enriched vitamins. Um, then I sometimes will feed them just straight flakes every now and then as well. So I got some better high quality flakes. I read it's good to keep all the food that you have refrigerated. Um, even if it says not to be refrigerated like these flakes. Don't say to be refrigerated, but I read from a guy who does this professionally that he says it's better for uh, you know preservation reasons to always go ahead and uh, refrigerate the food that you feed to your fish. So once it's open. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to actually be preparing a meal for my fish now, okay? Or for all the inhabitants of the tank, actually, all marine life. So all that looks like here is um, I keep those little cubes that I showed you earlier all put in their own little compartments that are labeled the mysis, the brine, and uh, the um, tropical vegetable meat mixture. So what I'm going to give my uh, fish now is going to be mysis. It's the one I select, and I just rotate them randomly. So all I do is I take the mysis. I have a little cube here. As it turns out, the cube that I have left is enough to feed the fish that I have. Usually I use this dedicated knife here and I cut it on this board down to the size that I'm looking for for the fish. So since this is what I want, then what I do is I leave it in my spoon here. This is the spoon that I feed them from. Then I'm just taking the uh, highly unsaturated fatty acids, vitamins, and garlic mixture here. And I'm only using one drop because I have one fish and that does the job. One little drop seems to go a long way, so I put my drop on it, and then I need to let that sit for about five minutes and allow it to saturate the food properly. And so then while that's going on, the next thing I have to do here, actually first before I continue on, and I screw this up every now and then, I allow this other food here to thaw too much. And once this food thaws, I don't trust it anymore, so what I do is throw it away, and I keep wasting food doing that. So this goes straight back to the freezer right now. So for feeding the corals themselves, all I've done is I've gone and done some very general research about each coral that I've introduced into the tank, and I've made sure to find out the specific parameters that that coral needs as it pertains to the nutrition of that coral. So what I did is I just simply made a list of the corals that I had, 
and I put it onto an index card. And on this index card, after I made information about all the different corals, I went on and I made a feeding schedule for each coral. Now I know what corals need to be fed, and then I turn to the back, and this gives me the specifics over those coral. The classification of the coral itself, and uh, what it feeds on, how often it needs to be fed, and all that. And then what I do is I make two piles between these cards that I have. I have a pile that are, the, that are for the corals that need to be fed while the tank lights are on, and then a pile for the corals that need to be fed when the tank lights are off. So let's say that I'm going to feed one of my corals directly. So there's again two ways that you're feeding your corals, and one way you're feeding it, you're just introducing a pre-mixed amount of uh, your phytoplanktons and things like that that the coral needs and you're putting it into a high flow area of the tank where a water where a power head is and allow it just to be pushed throughout the volume of the water column itself and the coral can kind of fend for itself and gets what it needs so I do that once every couple days just as a general feeding then I have my specific feedings so for the general feeding I can take the food that I have here and I've put it you know in my little measuring um, spoon here and I can drop it straight into the tank. Now for my specific feedings, when I'm feeding those corals as I showed you with the index cards, exactly what the coral needs when it needs it, what I do is I get a little bit of tank water, pull it out of the tank, I get the uh, specific food that that coral needs and I dilute it and I just mix it straight into here. So now this water is loaded and it's been diluted having exactly what that coral needs. Then you just get a very simple turkey baster, the solution that you've made now, the food, into the baster, and then you go in and you feed the coral. And it's really cool watching the coral close up its tentacles and start to receive the food. It's pretty neat to watch. Food so. that I've selected for my actual fish itself to be soaked for long enough in its fatty acids, then the only two utensils that I use whenever I go to feed them is the spoon itself that I serve the food off of and then the knife to be able to divide up the food and feed the fish in a manner in which it can consume the food as it falls through the water column without making its way all the way down into the substrate and then being trapped and decomposing later on. So you feed, it at, you feed the, the animals at a rate in which they're able to consume it and so this way I'm able to control that with the knife. So the first thing you want to make sure that you do whenever it's time to feed is to turn everything off such as your power heads, your main power heads and your skimmer so it doesn't get picked up right away and uh, if you have a different, if you have a wave generator or some type of a controller for a power head, you either turn the power head totally off or you put that power head into a um, what they call a feed mode so it slows it down that way it's not blowing all over the place. Pull it off, let it allow it to fall into the tank You know what? That is so weird. He's actually acting really skitzy. My fish is. He clearly doesn't look as comfortable as he normally does. It's like he knows he's being filmed. I think my fish is camera shy. Right. Feed him some more here. Drop the rest in. Feed my, um, my actual crab here. Little strawberry crab. He knows it's food time. And so I like to give him a little bit of food because I don't have a whole lot of algae. And uh, he gets aggressive if he doesn't get what he wants. So I've se I have seen him myself eat a snail, even though he's only supposed to be a herbivore. So much for that. And that was after I starved him for a few days that he ate like that. So it's good to go ahead and feed him every now and then. See it closing up right there? Yeah, he's eating the food, he's digging it. Maxima clam. Gotta very gently give him food. He's a baby. Just a little baby. Mmm. Really, I'm only supposed to feed him once a week. I know I'm overfeeding my tank, they call it overfeeding syndrome. And I know I do. It's really hard to help it though. You just want to keep feeding everything because it opens up to be fed. You can't help it. Just want to feed it. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch this video blog entry of Daily Tank Maintenance.